All right, and for today's meeting, we have uh, a great new plant family. Uh, it happens to be one uh, uh, of my favorite. Uh, it's going to be considered by most people to be kind of weedy and kind of invasive. And maybe that's why I like it, because I don't have time to deal with plants that are very slow growing and uh, that uh, are just going to sit and do nothing. Uh, so here we have a cactus and succulent garden that has been overrun by Axalis. And Axalis is going to be a plant that is loved by many uh, and hated by a lot more people. Uh, and uh, so that's going to be the plant that we get to talk about today. So I don't know what's worse, uh, having a cactus and succulent garden that is overrun by Axalis uh, because it's going to be a lot of work in getting the axalis out of there or better yet get rid of the cactus and the succulents and keep the axalis and have an axalis garden which would be nice to have uh, or bleed a lot because there's going to be a lot of prickles and spines and jagged edges from the cacti and the succulents that you will have to be careful with uh, so it's a choice i'll keep the axalis thank you very much get rid of the cacti so it's also a plant that has been associated with uh, St. Patrick's Day. However, that is not correct. For St. Patrick's Day, uh, we want to have the clover, uh, which is a completely different plant family, which is a completely different plant. However, you will see Axalis being offered at the local nursery when uh, St. Patrick's Day comes around. And uh, the notion that if you find a four leaf clover is going to be a good luck. Well, yes, because in most cases, uh, the clover will have just three leaflets. So finding a mutated form that is going to be the four leaf or we may have four leaf is an anomaly. And uh, it just happens to be what people have been doing many, many, for many years, just finding those weird individuals that are different. And so the search and so the hybridizing and the selection for a four leaf clover kind of came to a halt uh, when they found that there was a water fern, a water fern that always or that has uh, four leaf, uh, which is exactly like a four leaf clover. So once I found that, it's like, okay, there is no point in coming up with a four-leaf clover since there's already a plant that kind of has the same thing. So then that's the end of that. Uh, so today we could see Axaliriaceae or uh, the wood sorrel family. Axalis being uh, the biggest genus uh, in the group. Uh, we'll see just a few that are going to be around here, but it's quite a small family six genera uh, and about 770 species, kind of native to most of the parts of the world. So we'll see a few uh, that are native to South America and a couple of other parts of the world. Uh, here's uh, where you might find them in the wild. So axales for the most part will tend to be kind of cool season or they love the cold. Uh, for us, they're gonna be a fall, spring, winter type of plant. And so here is uh, the top of the Andes mountain, uh, so over 4,000 meters in elevation. And this is where some of the axalis are native to, at least uh, the South American ones. Uh, here they are just growing and flowering on top of the mountain, kind of covered by the rest of the plant, kind of you know, taking shelter, getting a little bit of warmth from them. Uh, and uh, here's uh, what's going to, how they're going to look in the wild. So for us, when it becomes too hot and too uh, uh, dry, they kind of go dormant uh, and they might come back the next year or actually do come back the next year. Uh, and here's uh, some more in the wild, just as a very low growing plant. Uh, within this group, there's gonna be some bigger individuals, but most of them are gonna be somewhat of a herbaceous uh, type of plant. For us, this is what's gonna happen, you're gonna plant uh, something and voila, all of a sudden you will have that axalis plant just magically pop out of the ground. Uh, even in media that has been sterilized and media that is straight out of the bag, somehow axalis finds 
it's way into it and it'll come up and it'll grow faster than everything else. There are several things that make this group of plants kind of being very resilient. Uh, number one, they may have a very long taproot that is, allows the plant to regenerate. So if you were to cut the plant here, uh, the remaining taproot could possibly regenerate the rest of the plant, making it difficult to remove or you have to remove the entire root system. Uh, some others may have a underground or above ground stem, either a rhizome or a stolon that will allow to creep out and kind of cover the ground or allow them to cover a little more space. Uh, so a few of the survival mechanisms and that's what's gonna happen. Uh, you're gonna have areas that are just gonna have this plant kind of growing and covering every aspect of the ground. And then we have uh, the three leaflets, kind of heart shaped, kind of nice, and now becoming more of the St. Patrick's Day. Uh, it is known as oxalis because uh, the plant has oxalic acid. And if you have ever taken a leaf from an axalis and you were to chew it, it's safe. It has some uh, kind of a citrusy or acid taste to it, kind of lemony, that is the axalic acid. And so the entire plant has it and uh, most members of the plant will have it. It's kind of what the plant, uh, how the plant gets its name. If we look at the flowers, uh, here is your typical flower for axalis. Uh, kind of nice. Here's a side view with the leaves uh, and a few more uh, here sometimes by themselves or sometimes as a cluster or a grouping uh, with several blossoms on a flower cluster. And uh, one of the things that you can look at is that the flowers are going to kind of twist as they are unfurling. Uh, so that is one of the characteristics. So here we have the petals and there here we have the sepals. So now if we look at the flowers. Uh, when they open, the plant is going to consist of uh, five petals uh, and there's going to be the five sepals. The sepals are just going to be kind of greenish toward the bottom. That really play a major role uh, once the flower has opened. And if we remove the petals, then we can uncover uh, the reproductive structures that are going to be within it. And so one of the things that is going to be unique with this plant group is that there's going to be 10 stamens. Five of them are going to be tall and you'll see them to the top and five of them are going to be short and you will see them to the bottom. And in the middle, you have several stigmas uh, that will then become the fruit. And so we have the remnants of the petals. The petals are partially fused towards the bottom. So they're not completely separate from one another. Uh, and uh, if we take just a closer look at the reproductive structure. So here are the five stamens, tall ones. Uh, there's the stigmas with the style that leads to the ovary. And here are the short stamens. And there's a remnant of the sepals. And so that would be the ovaries of uh, this particular plant group. So unique to axalis, this is something that you can look at. However, it is very difficult to miss this family group. Uh, pollination is just going to be generalistic. Uh, we're going to have insects. Uh, any insects can potentially go in there. Uh, the plant will produce uh, or secrete pollen uh, and nectar uh, and uh, it'll be able to feed animals and so they'll look after uh, the flowers. For us, uh, bees would be a major visitor as well as uh, many other animals that are out there. Uh, once pollination and fertilization is achieved, now we have the development of the fruit and for oxalis, we have a capsule. That would be the fruit. Uh, most often it's gonna be a dry uh, type fruit that it will not have any real value, but there's some members of the species that will have an edible fleshy fruit that we'll see later on. Uh, so here's where we cut the fruit in uh, half and you can see the several compartments that houses uh, the many, many, many seeds that are there. Uh, here's where the seeds have matured, so the brown ones are now viable, and the oxalis are going to forcefully eject the seeds. It is not uncommon for people to be watering an area and they'll feel as if something was uh, catapulted towards them, and in fact 
that is exactly what happens the moment that water hits uh, uh, the seed pod or any kind of vibration the seeds will forcefully eject you may hear them pop and uh, they'll hit your face uh, they'll hit your nose they'll hit your eyes uh, and possibly they'll get stuck on your clothing and that's how they will get these uh, spurs or uh, an animal a dog a cat or some other vector uh, other axales may have a bulb like structure now i say bulb like structure because uh, last plant family the lily family had the true bulbs this is just a bulb like structure so a condensed stem that will allow the plant to survive and uh, spread out uh, so here's a species from uh, south africa that is uh, particularly fruitful in making a lot of uh, bulbs uh, either above or below the ground and or they may have some kind of bulbules uh, below the ground there are several axales out there that uh, below the ground there's going to be a large bulb and then there's going to be lateral bulbs that will be produced uh, most often people will yank the leaves leaving the uh, below ground structure uh, intact so that, that will resprout the plant or as they are doing some gardening work, they will break this into several pieces and each of the bulbules has the ability to make a brand new plant. So that's how the axales may take over an area by production uh, of this uh, type bulbules. Uh, so here's uh, some of the roots and some more of those uh, bulbules that you can see kind of breaking up. So be very careful, make sure that if you're dealing with this plant, you might wanna dig it out instead of just uh, yanking it out. Uh, so here's uh, an axalis. Uh, this is uh, one of the more common around here that it's, it's often as a, uh, treated as a weed. Here it is uh, just growing happily on top of our uh, natal plum uh, with uh, its beautiful flowers. And uh, here's a uh, yellow, uh, flowers loved uh, by uh, bees. Uh, so that's a yellow one. And here's uh, the more common creeping uh, wood sorrel. Uh, so creeping in that it's gonna kind of crawl down to the uh, underground and it may root as it touches the ground. So if it happens to creep uh, or crawl or it can also climb. So depending on if it's close to some kind of structure, some kind of other plant, uh, it will have no problem in growing on top of that. Uh, here's triangularis uh, uh, being offered at the local garden center for St. Patty's Day, St. So Patrick's Day. So here's uh, the green form with uh, the white flowers. Uh, and there's also now selections uh, for having the purple foliage or purple leaf that adds an extra splash of color uh, to the landscape. And that has kind of uh, slightly pinkish flowers. Uh, Axalis squamata. Uh, here it is. Uh, this is from uh, South Africa uh, and uh, it's uh, very, very interesting and kind of cutie to grow. Axalis adenophylla. This one is native to Chile uh, and it's very drought tolerant. However, uh, one of the problems that you may encounter with Axalis here in Southern California is going to be the rust uh, infections or diseases. And uh, some of these are going to be very susceptible or very sensitive to it, and they're not going to look as good as they should because of that. Uh, but if you get a very, ever get a chance, it is kind of a very nice plant to grow. And here's uh, where I was able to grow it a couple of years ago with the flowers. Uh, Axales valdiviensis uh, from uh, South America is one that I grew couple of years ago, or Axales uh, brasiliensis uh, from Brazil uh, or South America as well. That was being offered for sale in some of the nurseries. Uh, and there's some more flowers right there. Uh, and uh, Axales purpurea, uh, this would be probably one of the best ones. Uh, if you had a choice of going in Axales, uh, purpurea is going to be the better choice. There is a big flower individual that is known as a Grand Duchess, and that is what we're seeing right here being used as a ground cover. Uh, so here it is uh, being used, uh, or in a house here in Long Beach, I think this is by Bellflower and Stearns, or at least close to that area. 
Uh, we have a tropical garden and uh, guess what? The ground cover is uh, the oxalis. Uh, the oxalis that has uh, taken over, uh, which is good. So this is going to spread through underground uh, stems or so rhizomes. Uh, and it's beautifully covering the ground and uh, highlighting some of the bromeliads and uh, some of the other plants. So here it is, uh, that's next to the sidewalk, so you can see it. Uh, here is the flowers, the side of the flowers with uh, the uh, petals and sepals, and here's uh, the flowers themselves. Relatively large for an axalis, uh, bigger than a quarter. Uh, and uh, there's a uh, couple of different colors, whites, pinkies, and a few other selections that are out there. And if you happen to find it, just uh, dig out a couple of plumps or a couple of plants from the ground. They'll have roots, take them home, plant them, and you can have this great plant uh, for yourself. And here's a combination of a uh, couple of them uh, here in the landscape uh, of several, some type of, several types of axalis uh, and a few more right there. So if you like Axalis, you should definitely have this one. Axalis herta, uh, this is from South Africa. I had the opportunity of growing it. Uh, notice in this case, the leaflets do not have a pedial, so they're kind of just attached to the stem. So it's a very, very short pedial here uh, where the uh, leaflets come out of. And that is giving us uh, this really nice purple flower. Uh, it has been Caution uh, for people who grow, uh, who live uh, around the coastal areas uh, to be careful with this as it may become an invasive. That's okay with me uh, because this is the one that is known to make a lot of those uh, bulbs or bulb, uh, bulb volvules that I've shown you before. And uh, those can also be made from the stems, so not just the below the ground. So as the plant dies uh, during our summer, you'll see that entire stem will branch into the individual bulbules that could potentially be spread out or spread into different parts of the garden. Axalis carnosa, uh, meaning fleshy. Uh, here we have uh, an individual that has uh, naturalized itself uh, and uh, comes from seeds. Uh, and uh, carnosa meaning fleshy, so the leaves are much, much thicker uh, than some of the other axalis. And in the back, you can see the beautiful crystals uh, is which, uh, where the oxalic acid is found within this plant. Uh, and it will develop a stem. So as we look at other oxalis, there will be individuals that can get to a, be a good size, not just a small ground cover. Uh, so I think they get to a good size. And here's yellow flowers uh, for that one. And uh, oxalis, here's a, a shrub individual. Uh, use uh, been used in the landscape. Uh, this one is known for dropping uh, the leaflets and uh, keeping the pedial uh, that will remain attached to the plant for a while. And here is uh, uh, the leaves, the flowers for that individual. And uh, the largest axalis, uh, this is axalis uh, gigantia, meaning the giant. And uh, this is a shrub axalis. It comes from some of the driest uh, part in uh, South America, so the Atacama Desert in Chile. Uh, so here is a plant that is from the desert. It is extremely drought tolerant. So during uh, the summer when it doesn't get any water, it will drop all of its leaves and uh, it will just uh, remain as a stem. Uh, the stem is woody, uh, which is uncommon for oxalis. Uh, so that will allow the plant to survive through some of the harsh uh, summers and as soon as there's a little bit of rain it'll come back and it'll restart uh, continue its growth. Uh, when you see the leaf uh, it's a typical three leaflet oxalid looking thing and uh, even the flowers it uh, uh, looks exactly like any other oxalis. So this has always been my uh, plant expert fooling a plant when I show it to them, like, tell me what this is. And obviously many of them have never even considered an axalis as a shrub, let alone a woody shrub or that size. So they often like, is this an axalis? Like, yeah, wow. So it's, it's great, it's a great plant. Uh, often sold uh, in the cactus and succulent trades for the fall uh, season uh, plant sales or plant shows. 
and here's the flowers for that and there's the flowers with the reproductive structure uh, now there is uh, an axalis that will drop the leaflets in a very early in its development so this is axalis ruciformis meaning uh, butcher's broom and uh, you can see here the petiole of the leaf is flat kind of like a leaf itself and then the leaflets would be here uh, the leaflets do not really expand or they don't really do anything. They are shed early on in the uh, growth of the plant. So that what you are left with are going to be the petioles that would be carrying out the photosynthesis. So there's the leaflets when they are expanded and once that happens, uh, they'll drop. As you can see here, there are no more leaflets. Uh, and so this one is now flowering and very happy. And you can see here where some of them have abandoned and sort of lost all of their leaflets here and there. So a uh, collector's item, kind of uh, unusual, uh, but it happens with several plants where uh, the petiole is a stronger structure uh, rather than the leaflets. And so over time they have given the job of uh, photosynthesis and whatever the leaf will do uh, to the petiole instead of uh, the leaflets themselves. Uh, and here's uh, the flowers uh, for this individual. And uh, uh, this Axalis palmifolia or uh, the palm leaf Axalis. So notice uh, the petioles extend very high and uh, it has multiple leaflets. And so it uh, looks like a very tiny palm. Uh, it has uh, tiny bulbs underneath it, it goes dormant, uh, but it's a great, great looking Axalis if you ever want to grow one, or if you have a choice of one, then uh, this would be one. Uh, or uh, through Logie's uh, greenhouses, uh, the, you may find uh, uh, Axalis, silver and gold. So a selection for having uh, variegated uh, leaves in silver, and then the gold is coming from uh, uh, the flowers. So I think I paid $9.95 uh, for this individual from Logie's back in the days, but I think it's still available. Uh, to some of other nurseries out there. Uh, and uh, here's uh, a climbing axalis, axalis pendicularis. Uh, here it is uh, off of the tropical jungles in South America. So kind of crawling, kind of hanging, kind of just uh, doing its thing out in nature. Uh, and uh, here's uh, the leaflets and here's uh, the flowers that I happen to spot. Uh, and uh, we have uh, one of the few oxalis that will provide edible uh, portions or, uh, or food sustenance, oxalis tuberosa, as the name says, oxalis tuberosa means uh, that it produces a tuber. Uh, most people will know it as oca. Uh, and so here it is growing in a container. Uh, I grew it a couple of years ago. And so there is a stem that instead of craw, uh, growing out, it decides to bury it itself and then it begins to swell up uh, storing uh, nutrients for the plant. So, so this plant is native to the higher uh, altitudes of the Andinian mountains. So it will store uh, food in uh, this uh, tuber and uh, during the right season it will regrow and it will continue on living. Uh, so here are the tubers as uh, when I took the plant out of the ground uh, or when I pull it out of the pot and you can see the growing tip as well as the tubers as they continue on maturing and here's when I was able to harvest some of them. Uh, so this is often sold uh, in some of the uh, health food areas and uh, often uh, you may see them in some of the plant catalogs. Uh, so if you ever find them grow it because it's kind of interesting. Once you harvest uh, the tubers, uh, it is highly recommended that you put them in sun so that uh, the, uh, the oxalic acid will kind of disintegrate and that gives them this really nice, usually bright red color. However, there are other colors that are out there. Eating it raw is not good, it's too sour, uh, but you have to prepare it, you have to cook it for about five minutes or boil it for about five to six minutes. Uh, if you ever travel to Central and South America, you might see some weird uh, bulbs uh, or some weird underground structures from different plants, uh, including some of the ocas that you may find. 
And in my last trip to South America, to Peru, uh, I was able to find that this one that was then uh, cooked for again, five, six minutes uh, with a little bit of salt. And I was very surprised because if I were to close my eyes and somebody would have put it in my mouth, I would have better defined that it was potato because it has exactly the same texture and the same flavor as a boiled potato which makes sense because that's where potato came from as well and so there were many plants that were selected for kind of that flavor uh, and uh, for a similar caloric value but potato obviously became the number one oka is now gaining some popularity but i still need to see them in the store here in the u.s uh, so now, now moving away from Axales, here's Avarroa carambola, which is uh, growing here in uh, Fullerton Arboretum. This is going to be the plant uh, that will produce uh, the star fruit. So yes, star fruit is a member of the Axales family. Uh, so here are the flowers that will kind of resemble an Axales in the beginning of some of the fruit. And uh, here is the flowers uh, themselves in the side view and uh, the remaining so then we will have the fruit uh, the fruit that is going to be a fleshy fruit uh, kind of a, a berry like uh, fruit and here is for sale uh, the fruit is very sour uh, especially when it's harvested when it's green and like this in the market now we have grown the plant uh, in the garden and we have harvested fresh fruit uh, tree ripe and they are a million times better and I think Kevin happened to eat them all last summer when we were still able to go into the garden uh, so if you ever get a chance uh, buy the star fruit wherever you can find it uh, take the seeds plant them they all grow uh, put the tree outside if you can uh, it will grow very well here in Long Beach California and you'll probably get some fruits uh, in about five years out of them uh, the other member of this family, Avaroa bilibi, is uh, known as cucumber tree. Uh, here it is, uh, not from Long Beach. I don't think it grows here yet. I have yet to see it. Uh, this is from Florida, uh, Prairie Child uh, Arena, where I had a chance to see the tree growing outdoors. And this is now morally, uh, it's used as a flavoring for fish. So within the Filipino community, you can see it here in some of the fish too, that it is uh, used to flavor fish soups. It is very, 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 very sour. So it gives uh, the fish soup a citrusy taste, which is very, very good, uh, but I would not wanna eat it just as a straight fruit because it's extremely sour. So you have to eat it uh, as a cook item or uh, in cooking, but the cucumber, it is known as Bilibi in uh, Tagalo, and uh, that happens to also be a botanical name for it. And uh, here's uh, where you might see it as a product in the frozen section in some of the markets uh, being sold uh, by as a tree cucumber. Uh, or uh, the next genus is Biophyton sensitivum, which is known as sensitive plant. Not as sensitive as the real sensitive plant, but I guess it does have some movement. I happen to have this one, uh, any flower. And uh, just a couple of extra axales that I happen to find uh, in my travels, growing in containers uh, here, uh, growing in the ground, uh, growing uh, in some cinder blocks, just as a weedish uh, type individual, doing quite nicely and looking great. Uh, growing as a weed in our horticulture unit growing as a weed in a, a, a pot for our Mexican blue fan palm that was adopted by Gus, uh, and growing as a weed, or I guess mixed growing with uh, our umbrella plant uh, somewhere in the garden. Uh, and uh, a really nice container that I decided to make a couple of years ago, uh, where I took several different types of axales and put them in one container. So this was my axales garden that I was very proud of. So here are about five or six different types of axales uh, that I put in one pot and uh, 
was very happy for when it was growing. So you can do great things with Axales. I think they're underrated and underappreciated. Uh, so uh, you're in the Axalic group. I thank you because they're a great plant. And with that, I will thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.